Are you moving to the Atlanta area and want to live where you can find historical mansions like this? Or maybe you can't afford that, but you just are working at the CHOA, the CDC, Emory, and you want to live as close as possible to those locations? Well, then you might want to consider Druid Hills. Let's talk all about living in Druid Hills right now. I'm Molly Slesnick and welcome back to my channel if you're returning or if you are new to my channel hello and you know do me a favor and hit that like a subscribe button and hit that bell so you can be notified when I post a new video but um, I am your walking talking tour guide of all things here in the Atlanta area and I really just want to help you out if, if you're moving from out of state or maybe you're just moving from the burbs and trying to figure out what neighborhood to live in in the Atlanta area well I'm your gal I want to help you find a neighborhood that fits your lifestyle and your budget. So if you have any questions as you're, I'm going along, feel free to put those questions in the comments box or shoot me a text, send me an email or give me a call. I would love to hear from you and see how I can help you out and make your move here a little bit easier. But I am here in the Druid Hills area and I'm walking down one of Druid Hills prime streets. Actually, I should, I hope I don't get towed because you really can't be parking here unless you have a permit. And that's all because these streets are really close to the Emory campus. So they really wanna keep people from parking here and walking over to the campus. But some of these prime streets that are filled with these historical mansions include Springdale Road, Oxford Road, Oakdale Road, and Lowater. So I'm walking down them right now and you're just gonna see like, look at this lot okay so these historical mansions are on huge lots so between one to two acres and you're just not going to find that in other neighborhoods in the atlanta area unless you're looking at areas in buckhead or maybe ansley park but these homes are very historical in nature built in like the 1920s era i mean look at that roof is that cool or what um that's one thing though i do want to tell you about in Druid hills is it's in a historic district so you can't just alter a home willy-nilly you really have to go through a big extreme permitting process and they're pretty strict so even if you want to just change a window or um, add something on it's they're really highly regulated on what they will let you do um, i would say one of the most notable architects in this area is neil reed you're going to hear his name a lot if you are looking for homes um, he's designed a ton in this neighborhood so um yeah so i i thought i'd start off this video with just kind of walking around one of these prime streets and showing you some of these homes because it's kind of fun to look at right i mean um may not be able to afford them all but um in terms of prices for homes on these streets you're looking at anywhere probably from 1.5 to i think there's the highest one that i saw that's for sale right now is four and a quarter so they really just vary on size um, or on price based on size of the home in the lot. And a lot of these lots are, if I mentioned it before, one to two acres. So you get a big, big lot and you know, just look at these. Look at that one, that one right there. You're gonna see a lot of tall, mature trees. And these roof lines, I just can't get enough of these type of roof shingles. I'm sure it's a pain to keep that uh, that shingle up and you've got to get a specific shingle repair guy to come out because it's not like your typical roof, but very beautiful. And all of these streets right here are very walkable to the Emory Village. So the Emory Village has, you know, there's like a Panera so you could get some coffee and a bagel. They've got a sandwich shop. There's a nice little pizza place down there, a cookie shop. So it's very walkable. I wouldn't say all of Druid Hills is walkable. It really just depends on where you live. But these prime streets, yes, you can walk there. And in fact, these streets are great for just, if, if you live around the area or if you don't, but you like to take a run, I love jogging down these streets. Um, they're just scenic for one. And you don't, these are really, really long stretched roads. So you don't get um, a lot of cross traffic. There's not a lot of blocks to break it up. It's kind of just one long stretch, which is pretty cool. So here we go. Another one right there. So I think you kind of get the point of what the historical mansions look like. 
Um, some of them are, they're so well kept and maintained and a lot of them have upheld the interior integrity, but with all the modern conveniences that we like in a home too. So um, they are just beautiful and I wish I could tour them all. But One thing I want to point out before I head over to one of the parks is that, so I'm on Springdale Road and you know, I've got some of these lovely big homes up here on this hill. And then on the other side, it looks like I'm in a forest, right? So on the other side of this is the Druid Hills golf course. So beautiful scenery over there, but um, it is kind of nice that if you live on this section of Springdale Road, you don't even have <laughs> neighbors across the street. You just have, um, beautiful tall trees. All right, I'm going to head over to one of Druid Hills parks and I'll just kind of give you some general details of what Druid Hills is all about. Right now I am standing in Olmsted Linear Park. This is actually comprised of six different parks. It was developed by Frederick Olmsted. If you don't know who he is, he created Central Park of New York City, so pretty well known. But um, I mean, look how beautiful this area is. Just tons of trees, tons of, tons of greenery. I mean, this is fall, so everything's kind of turning a little brown, but you can imagine at the peak of summertime how lush and green it is. But this road right here is Ponce de Leon. So if you go this way, you hit, will run right into Midtown. And if you go out the other way, you're going to hit City of Decatur. And right across the street, you probably can't see it through the trees, but there's some tennis courts right there. That is the Druid Hills Country Club. So it is a private country club, of course. It is expensive, um, but you, if you aren't into golf, but you just want a social membership, they do have that option as well. I have neighbors that join, are members and lots of friends that are, and they keep telling us to join, and I just can't get myself to do it. I don't think I would use it as much as others, but I know they, they've got a pool, they've got tennis courts, they have activities for kids. They do a lot of social events for the different holidays. So it's a very active membership of all ages. Um, like I said, social membership, I think it starts at 20,000. It may, they may have increased the prices a little bit, but that's the social membership. If you want a golf membership, don't quote me because it may have changed since the last time I looked into it. Uh, but anywhere from like 60 to 80,000, I think. Uh, but beautiful, beautiful golf course, and it runs right along Clifton Road, and on the other side is Springdale, which I showed you. Um, but a nice country club. And you do not have to live in Druid Hills to be a member of the Druid Hills Country Club. You can live in any of the other surrounding neighborhoods and join. Where is Druid Hills located? Let's put up some maps here so you can see. So Druid Hills surrounds, you have Morningside, Virginia, Highland on one side. Um, just north of it is, you know, the Children's Hospital, the CDC, Emory. That's kind of the north end of Druid Hills. And then um, to the south side, just south of Ponce de Leon, you have Lake Clare, Candler Park. And then over to the east of it is City of Decatur. So that's where we are on the map. Now, in terms of getting around town, so from Druid Hills to get to downtown, you're looking at 15 minutes. Midtown, uh, 15 minutes as well. Buckhead, 20 minutes. The airport, that you're looking a little longer at 25 minutes. Uh, City of Decatur, probably seven to 10 minutes at the most. And you know, if you're th looking for grocery stores, honestly, the closest one is a Kroger off of Briarcliff and Clifton Road. But honestly, it's not my favorite. Um, I just don't like their meat produce, meat and produce selection. 
but you know, if you're just there to get a few things, it's great, but I would honestly go somewhere else to do your grocery shopping. Uh, there is a Publix off of North Decatur Road in Claremont, or you could go to the one, the Publix off of Ponce in Ponce Highland, um, or you could truck up north to the Tucko Hills area and they have a fabulous Publix and a fabulous Kroger there. So, and a lot of restaurants over there too. So. There are a lot of different options for you, um, but yeah, I just don't, for whatever reason, I just don't like that one at Briarcliff in Clifton, but I'll go there in a pinch. But so that's where we are. And as far as amenities of what's here, obviously I mentioned the country club. If you're looking for a swimming pool, you know, the country club has one, but there's also Venetian pools. It's off of Scott Boulevard. It has a really, really long wait list, but you could put your name on the wait list and maybe in three to four years you'll get in um so yeah it's it's a pretty popular place as well and um as far as far as festivals druid hills the only festivals i can really think of are they do a big festival on ponts fest, uh, in the spring and fall and it's actually in um a park just right next to this one right here on ponts and they've got a lot of um you know your crafts and um art vendors and they've got bounce houses so it's a fun event and a lot of people from morningside virginia highland candler park they can all walk over there which is really nice other attractions in the druid hills area include you know they've got this olmstead park they've got a couple of other different nature parks one of them being little water preserve that's a great place to walk around it's very shaded so even in the summertime it's got a lot of trees so you're not going to die from summer heat and it's got a nice little candler it's called candler park pond i think it's candler park candler something pond um so that's a beautiful area to walk around i've seen people fish there um so we'll take our kids and take a walk there they have a suspension bridge which is which is kind of cool um they also have the fernbank museum which that's another one i take to my kids to all the time they love the third floor with the tree canopy that they can climb and there's also an outdoor nature trail that they can walk through and it does have like a dinosaur exhibit not big but um so that's a good museum to join if you're looking to entertain the kids for a couple of hours there's also a fernbank science museum which don't get that confused with the fernbank museum uh it's a little bit older i'm not as impressed with it but some people like taking their kids there i don't know um, it's right across from the Fernbank Elementary School. So again, I mentioned, but Emory is located here. If you're not familiar what Emory is, Emory is a private um, college and it also has an Emory adult hospital. And across the street is a children's hospital, which the children's hospital is going to be moving to a new location not too far from here, um, which will be opening up in 2024, I believe but um and there's also the cdc so it's a big medical district right there off of clifton road and that area does get congested with traffic because you know everyone's going to work there or study there so um, you're going to have a lot of people walking around and um, driving through there but now let's get into talking about the homes here so you're going to find a lot more single family homes than you are going to find condos and townhomes remember in earlier I had mentioned that the Druid Hills is part of a historic district so they are very tight <laughs> when it comes to making changes to a house or changing the look of the exterior you really have to um, go through a lot of permitting so if you are looking to add on to a home in this area I really highly suggest getting in touch with the contractor who knows the historical guidelines who knows the permitting process and that's really going to help you out there um, but yeah so besides the big historical mansions that I showed you Druid Hills has a lot of you know brick Tudors and traditional style homes um, yeah and a lot of them are built in the 1920s now there are a couple of sections where you'll run into a ranch home but that's kind of like on the outskirts and like I said condos and townhomes there's not a ton of them and they are going to be kind of also on the outskirts like you're going to find the condos um, off of Briarcliff Road which is kind of on the edge of Druid Hills and also townhomes for the most part are kind of on the edge of Druid Hills off of Claremont and off of Briarcliff so 
um, in terms of the house prices. So the median sales price for a home in Druid Hills in the last six months was 927,500. For condos, approximately 386,000. And for a townhome, 445,000. Now I will say the condos and the townhomes, the majority of them that you are going to find in Druid Hills, they're a lot older looking in nature. There's a couple of newer options for townhomes, but for the most part, they are going to be a little bit older. As far as schools, so the schools that are districted to this neighborhood are Fernbank Elementary School, Druid Hills Middle School, and Druid Hills High School. So the Fernbank School is very highly rated, and then your middle school and high school, they're kind of average. I would just say do some research and see if they fit what you're looking for because it could be fine. Like I don't, <laughs> I just got hit with a pecan or something. So that's one thing you will find in, in Atlanta in general are a lot of pecan trees and they start dropping and falling and I just had one hit my shoulder. But yeah, I guess that's part of Atlanta Another for you. But... here that is a private school. It's called the Paideia School and it's located off of Ponce de Leon Avenue. It is a pre-K through 12th grade school. It is um, a campus of 16 acres. It has 14 different buildings. So um, I know there's a lot of people that send their kids there. It is a lovely campus. I mean, it just looks like this. It's just super green and very lovely. And it's, um, like I said, just off of Ponce, just before you get into uh, Virginia Highland and Candler Park. Okay, so I think the next thing to do is just show you kind of the hot spots of where you can go and grab something to eat and that's going to be Emory Village and then there's Emory Point which is a little bit newer and a little further north. So I'm right now at the south side of Druid Hill so I'm going to head just a little north and show you Emory Village where you can grab a bite to eat and also just kind of show you around the campus area. So I am in Emory Village right now and right behind me is Dave's Cosmic Subs. It really kind of takes me back to my college days because it's nothing fancy but it has really good sub sandwiches. And then across the street you've got Panera, so a good place to pick up some bagels, take them to work if you work over in the Emory area. And then next door we have this CVS, but I want to show you something unique about the CVS. It's not just a CVS, there is this Shields Meat Market. It's been here for a long, long time. So if you want some good cuts of meat to grill, check out Shields. All right, so now I'm going to show you some shops here. And I was over at that CVS, but then there's Dragon Bowl and then this Jimmy John's. Believe it or not, it used to be an old gas station. <laughs> So I'm going to show you the shops on this side. I'm really excited to see a few shops up this Rise and Dine. It was an excellent breakfast spot. We used to go there all the time. It closed down, so I don't know if it was because of COVID. And then the Family Dog next door, which was a burger joint, that also closed down. So hey, if you want a restaurant space, <laughs> there's a couple of commercial spots open down here. And then um, Double Zero, which is a great place to get pizza, pasta there. And they also have a good kids menu too, so I like going there. But Let's check it out. Okay, on the end of this little row of restaurants, this used to be a slice and pine, as you can see, and coming soon is Savvy Provisions, which they have kind of a selection of wines and meats and cheeses and um, just like a sl good selection of snacks and that kind of thing. There's a couple other shops over in Inman Park and in Brookhaven. And then back that way, you can see there's a Domino's and that's a Cloud9 vapor smoke shop if you're into that kind of thing. And then you'll see right behind me here is one of the circle drives um, or circle street traffic circle traffic street traffic circles. Yeah, that's what you call it. Um, but this is the entrance into the Emory University campus. So 
Um, you'll see a lot of students walking around over here. And I will say, if you're gonna come and park over here, make sure you are parking and actually using one of the restaurants because they will boot you. So if you are not using or going to a restaurant or one of the shops, don't park here. Y'all just check out this wall. So this is all made of marble. And that was one thing that surprised me about the Emory campus was that there's a ton of buildings made out of like marble. And it was just very shocking to me. So like, like look at these columns. And then, so this was Emory Village right back here. And then I am just coming through and then you can start getting into the campus this way. Sometimes at the Emory University campus, I forget that college students go here because it's so beautiful. But then I'm reminded like, yeah, that totally screams college right there. <laughs> in case you were wondering where you could get your Starbucks fix, well, there's a Starbucks right here inside the Barnes and Noble bookstore right here on the Emory campus. And then if we just kept walking this way, we're gonna hit roads like Oxford Road, Cornell Road, Harvard Road. Those are some excellent spots to live if you want to live like right behind campus. Now that I've shown you Emory Village, let's go check out some homes so you can see what the home styles are like. Okay, so I am walking down a typical street. I'm actually not too far from the Emory campus, probably maybe four or five blocks down, but it's very quiet right here. And you know, sometimes when I think of living right by a college campus, it's going to be loud and lots of cars, but you really don't get that here and you know you'll see that there's um like uh, let's see if i can show you here there is a sign right there there's going to be them those signs posted everywhere and it's basically saying no parking without a permit between the hours of eight to five so you really don't get all of that college parking on your street um and look this is a very nice wide street and you know a lot of these homes you know they're they're older homes so you know take a look around um, a lot of them may not have garages. They're just going to have a driveway. And one thing I'll point out, because we are in a historic district, you cannot get a fence in your front yard. In the backyard, yes, but in the front yard, no. Um, so I want to show you an example of a home that recently sold here. You know, we are not on the historic mansion streets anymore, so we're getting into more of a typical house that most of us will be living in so let me get right over to it so here is the neighboring house right there you're gonna get kind of a mix of like these cottage and brick tutors and brick traditionals um, but here we are right here and this is a really cute one it really um, you can see it's kind of been freshly painted but here it is and this is a four bedroom three bath it sold for seven hundred and seventy five thousand dollars just over 2400 square feet it was built in 1929 and let me put up some pictures so you can kind of see what the interior looks like so this one you know the living room is nice but it's a lot of these rooms are going to be closed off the kitchen has been updated but it's not to like 2021 standards um, a lot of space though and then the bedroom you'll see it's kind of darker just because there's no overhead light and then the bathroom while it's been updated it could use a new fresher look but it's still you know it's not bad but um, that's what you'll find in some of these older homes a lot of the rooms will be somewhat updated but it could always use a little bit more um, so you're gonna get kind of a mixed bag in this area some homes are gonna be updated more than others and of course the more it's updated the more it's gonna cost and then a lot of the layouts on these um, smaller homes they're gonna be very choppy you're not gonna get that open floor plan that you see in kind of the newer construction and the floor layouts that they built provide but um, still very cute options and again you are right by the Emory campus I should also point out that you're gonna get some really good mature trees like this one check it out awesome Well, 
I wish the weather would have cooperated with me more. When I first started filming, the sun was out. And of course, as I start going, then the clouds show up. But um, check out this house. It's super cute. It's a nice little tutor. But, um, you know, I just showed you a house that sold for 775,000 was a 4-3, 2,400 square feet. So I want to show you a home that's fairly, fairly similar. It's four bedrooms, three and a half baths. 2,800 square feet, but the price on this one is over a million dollars. It's a million sixty-seven thousand five hundred. But I'll just show you the difference. I mean, it's the same great location, um, but here it is. So great curb appeal, right? So let me put up some pictures here. You'll see it has a good formal living room. It's a little choppy, but the kitchen has been really well updated, and the primary bedroom is a good size. And look at that primary bathroom so yeah they've definitely put some money into this house renovating it and it even has this nice flat backyard and a garage so that's kind of your difference and one thing I will mention about the Druid Hills area depending on where you are the terrain can be very very hilly so if you're wanting a flat backyard you really need to pay attention because there's a lot of homes that don't have a flat backyard it can be kind of hard to find but I'm gonna watch my step I've got giant crack right here <laughs> but let's keep going I'm gonna move on ahead and show you another home this one's gonna be a little bit higher in price range but you know I am showing you this 700,000 this million dollar home there are some homes that are a little bit cheaper there you know they, they, there's homes in the sixes to 700s and maybe even the fives but they're gonna be smaller just know smaller or need some updating and probably further away from the Emory campus Okay, so now I want to show you one of the more pricier homes in the neighborhood. And this one's unique because it just has a Dutch colonial look, which isn't quite all the home styles you find in Druid Hills. But nonetheless, this one went under contract really quickly. I can, I can tell you why. Um, but here's the house. So super cute. So this sold for $1.7 million. It was a five bedroom, four and a half bath over 3,700 square feet and it includes a carriage house. But let me put up some pictures here. I love how they tied the old in with the new. It, it just uses a lot of historical charm, but with a lot of the modern conveniences. So here's some of the pictures. So you'll see that it has a formal sitting room, amazing chef's kitchen, and it opens up to another living space. It has a large primary bedroom and tastefully renovated bathrooms. I just love how they tied in the old and the new together. And then check out this backyard. I wish I could show you more pictures, but this is an awesome uh, deck space and it has a pretty good, decent backyard. But um, again, in a carriage house, and there are a lot of people that love carriage houses around here for rental purposes or in-laws. So they are, you can find them around here, you know, you kind of have to search for them, but there there are quite a few carriage homes in the Druid Hills area. But anyway, it's so quiet around here. Can you believe that we are in a big city right now? And just look at all the trees around me. Um, yeah, Druid Hills is just a very beautiful area. And um, now I just want to take you for a drive around some of these streets so you can kind of see the different variations of the homes and sit back and relax and enjoy.
out on another street and just want to put out a couple more home options so this one it's got the brick painted white then across the street you got this nice gray brick painted house and then i've got a couple coming up here that i just think are adorable this one looks a little bit newer this doesn't look like a an older home but check this one out they still got a little bit of a halloween decoration up um, and then this one next door again super cute i love this brick color let me get up here again not gonna have a garage a lot of these don't um, but look at this one super cute and then across the way you have this one where they haven't really taken care of the landscaping quite as much um, but i would say overall most of the neighbors do take care of their yards pretty well now if you really just don't like the thought of an old house there is a little area in druid hills kind of on the edge of druid hills called duran falls and it has it's kind of like a little community of newer homes they were built in the 1990s so like you can see this one right here and then this one right behind me so it kind of feels like you're in the suburbs because they're fairly similar in nature and this does have its own community pool and a little playground it does have an hoa of 875 dollars annually um, and these are homes these, these homes are you know three i've seen some that are like 5,000 square feet so we're talking huge homes with basements and um you know you get right on north decatur road and you can go over to downtown decatur or hang a left and go into emory you're within minutes of that so like look at that one that one's really cool um so yeah you can find some newer homes and even you know i shouldn't say these druid hills is only old homes because there are scattered throughout the neighborhood some new builds too so um but yeah i just wanted to show you this so this option if you really like the area but you just can't commit to an old home i got you covered okay now i'm over at a place called emory point this was just built i think in 2015 i believe and this is really just right across the street from the cdc so if you work over there you can pop over here for lunch there's a lot of great little places to eat and i'm coming up on one of my favorite in this area it's called the general muir my husband loves their matzo ball soup but um, right next door this is like a sister shop it's tgm bakery I could smell the baked bread going on right now <laughs> and I'm thinking I might have to stop and buy a loaf of bread but um, you know you got some other shops like the loft is right here but um, and then above it are apartments so I don't know if you can see that very well but there's apartments above all of this retail They're already putting up decorations here over at Emory Point. Another thing I wanted to point out is just right next door, there is a fabulous hotel called the Emory Conference Center. So if you've got family staying in town and you just don't have space in your house, put them up in the Emory Conference Center. It's a lovely, lovely hotel and it doesn't really feel hotel chainish, I guess you could say. Is that a word, hotel chainish? Anyway. You guys, that is all I have for you today. Thank you for joining me on this tour of the Druid Hills area. If this was not your place to be, then stick around. I will be showing you more neighborhoods. We will find one that works for you. But if you have any questions, whether you're moving tomorrow or maybe you're moving in a year and you need to get those answered, just shoot me a text, send me an email, give me a call. Be happy to be there for you and answer any questions you have. Until next time, you guys, I'll see you in the neighborhood. I think I may go back to Loft and see if I need to buy something over there. So see you guys.